It's great that you're on board your GRE preparation journey and that you're headed towards your dream university. But in your journey, there are some icebergs that you have to take care of, such as the GRE con section. Did you know that only 3% of the test takers are able to see the underlying challenges that lie beneath it, such as time management, difficult questions, tricky traps, and the list just goes on. The challenge of GRE con section lies submerged between the fact that cons is easy, but without the right preparation plan and the right study plan, your boat might sink and you might never reach your destination. Hi, my name is Sachin Singhania, a GRE expert here at GREH. Today, I'm going to give you five tips along with examples to help you navigate through the quant iceberg. Before we dive into the tips, I request all of you to subscribe to our channel for more such updates. Be warned though, in the entire course of this video, you might feel the urge to try out these tips, but stick to the end, listen to all the five tips, and then you can proceed. Also, at the end of the video, we'll be providing you with an exclusive study plan that will help you get the high GRE score that you're targeting. So, what are we waiting for? Let's begin. Tip number one, learn walking before running. You know that you can't build great buildings without having a strong foundation. Exactly like that in quants, you can't have a good GRE score without having strong basics. This is the point where most of the students fumble. Let's find out how you can avoid this. Before you actually start your preparation, you have to analyze what your weak areas are. To do so, you can check out our GRE diagnostic test. The link is in the description below. Here is the report of Shiv Guru who is a GRE student. He scored a 146 on his GRE Corn diagnostic test. But can you guess what was his actual GRE Corn score? It was 167. This diagnostic test helps your guru understand his weak areas. Identifying your weak areas is the first step in your preparation. But second step is not to start solving the questions on your weak areas. This would actually hamper your preparation rather than helping it. You have to make sure that you're getting your basics cleared always. GRE Quant is like an analytical exam. You have to make sure that you're understanding the underlying concepts with clear depth. Let's understand this with an example from GRE Geometry. The diameter of a circle is 4 cm. If an equilateral triangle is inscribed in the circle, what will be the perimeter of the triangle? Give your answer to the nearest integer. To solve this, you should be clear on three key concepts. One, angle subtended by the diameter of a circle on the circumference of the circle is always 90 degrees. Two, in a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle, the sides are in the ratio of 1 is to 3 is to 2. Third, in an equilateral triangle, the three sides are of equal measure and the three angles are equal to 60 degrees. Now. The basic instinct of a test taker would be to apply all these concepts. But wait, never do that. Why? Because you have to learn to walk before you run. Always remember, start with the basics. Solve simple questions first and then go to the advanced level and gradually increase the difficulty level. In this case, it would be better if you start solving basic questions a demand knowledge of basic properties of circles and equilateral triangles. Once you're confident about the basics of these aspects, then you can move on to the challenging questions. But tell me one thing, is knowing the basics enough to solve every question? Absolutely not. And this is where tip number two comes in. Tip number two, one is never enough. One of the greatest free kick scorers of all time in football, David Beckham once said, that he practices his one kick at least a thousand times. Similarly, in your GRE Quan preparation, solving a question once is not enough. You have to make sure that you're solving different variations of the same question. Let's take an example. Take the topic of speed and distance. In this particular topic, there can be multiple variations of the same question. You can be given two relative speed moving in the same direction or in opposite directions. You can be asked to find the length of a platform or you may be asked to find the speed at which the train is running. Always remember that you have to solve multiple variations of the same question 
to master yourself in that particular topic and also make sure that you're focusing on the accuracy. And while we're on the topic of speed, you don't have to worry about that in the start. So I request all of you to keep your stopwatches aside. I'll be telling you the perfect time in the course of this video when to take your stopwatches out. After you have mastered your basics, focused on your accuracy, now comes the time to practice. And the next three tips are exactly about that. Tip number three, don't jump the gun. Before I tell you what that exactly means, let's look at one more question of GRE geometry. In the given figure, what is the measure of angle PSQ? The options are as follows. Can you solve this question? Feel free to pause this video and give it a try. And leave your comments down below and let us know if you have got the right answer. Now let's find the answer. But wait, when we gave the same question to 10 GRE aspirants, 8 of them got this question wrong. Curious to find out what they answered? Well, if you went with the answer of option A, which is 30 degrees, then you are with the 8 people who got this question wrong. Why? Well, this is a tricky question. Look at the question carefully. Nowhere it is mentioned that PS is parallel to QR. And this question is a perfect example of why students find quant difficult. They tend to go for the alternate angle theorem, which states that when two lines are parallel to each other, the alternate angles are always equal. Well, then what is the right answer? The right answer to this question is option C, 65 degrees. And let's look at the solution for this problem. Let's look at the figure once again. Step 1. Angle PTS is equal to angle QTR which is equal to 85 degrees from the property of vertically opposite angles are equal. Step 2. Angle QRT is equal to 180 degrees minus angle QTR plus angle TQR. Step 3. Angle QRT is equal to 65 degrees which is equal to angle QRP. Step 4. Angle QRP is equal to angle QSP from the property of angles subtended by a segment on the same side are equal and therefore angle QSP is equal to 65 degrees. See, how can you go wrong in such a simple looking question? GRE Quants is all about making sure that you're focusing on the question. So, don't jump the gun, read the question carefully and avoid these tricky traps. Well, speaking of traps, the next tip is all about that. Tip number four, beware of the tricky traps. We are all aware of the Tom and Jerry story where Tom used to set up multiple traps for Jerry. But Jerry was smart enough to overcome them and avoid them. You have to be like Jerry and you have to be aware of the tricky traps. Let's look at one more question. If x squared plus 6x is equal to minus 9, then how many values of x are possible? The options are as follows. Were you able to solve this question? Leave a comment below and let us know if you got the right answer. Well. If you chose option C, then you're amongst the countless test takers who fall into the tricky trap of this question. You may ask how? Let's look at the solution. x squared plus 6x plus 9 is equal to 0, which then can be factored as x plus 3 whole square is equal to 0. Therefore, x is equal to minus 3. At the first glance, you might think that it's a quadratic equation. So, it was supposed to have two values and that is the trap. Since the roots are identical and equal, therefore this particular quadratic equation will only have one value. These kinds of traps are present everywhere in GRE quant. You have to make sure that you're never solving a question mentally. You have to make sure that you're always writing the question down. This will help you understand the question in an organized manner and approach it the same way. But if you are familiar with these four tips, there is one tip that is still left that will help you understand where you actually need to focus. Let's talk about the final tip. Tip number five, know your priorities. Remember I told you to keep your stopwatch aside? Well, now is the time to bring it back. Always remember, GRE is a time-based test. So you have to make sure that you're managing your time really well. Be the times manager and not the other way around. In the GRE exam, you would have to solve every question under two minutes. And there are usually three types of quant questions. 
Let's take a look at them. After you have focused on your basics and improved your accuracy, you have to start focusing on the time management. Keep solving questions. Keep giving mock tests and sectional tests. Always remember, at this stage of your preparation, never leave your stopwatch. So there you have it. Start implementing these tips in your preparation strategy and start making the right study plan. Also, for those of you who are confused about the right study plan, check out Dipanchu study plan. He is a GREH student who scored a whopping 169 out of 170 in GRE Quant. Wow, that's a lot. Also, for those of you who are looking for an expert's guide on the GRE Quant formula book for a perfect 170, check out the link in the description below. For both these ebooks, always remember to use these tips in your preparation because they will help you tackle the quant iceberg efficiently. Also, to know more about GRE preparation, do check out our previous videos, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for instant updates. So this is it. Thank you so much for watching and happy learning from our side.